Good morning, YouTube. This is my old Garmin Street Pilot 3 GPS. They also call it their Color Map series. I showed you this in an earlier video. I've used this a couple of times in the last few months, and I went to turn it on because I wanted to connect up the data port and upload some geocaching waypoints, and the thing wouldn't turn on. You would hold the power button here, and nothing would happen, and I shook the unit around, heard a rattling sound inside, thought that might be a clue, so what I did was I pulled out these four screws here, there's four along the bottom, and then there's two on the top here, and then there's these two over in the corner, and I was able to pop this thing open, so I figured I'd take a look inside when I flipped it over, this little screw right there fell out and onto the floor. So this looks like a memory backup battery here, a little lithium cell. And this screw goes in there. there. There was a ground pad right there. And there's also one over here on this side, another screw. This one was tight. But this screw had fallen out and it was just rattling around. Got that back in there, snugged it down. And if we close it up here, there we go. It's working again. So, yep, yeah, we're back running. Yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to get some more geocaching waypoints in here is that I find the routing or the navigation on this unit seems to work better than it does on my smartphone or on my bike GPS. This one will show you clear down to as close as the GPS accuracy will allow you to get. If I use something like Google Maps on the smartphone, as soon as you get within about 200 feet, maybe 60, 70 meters of the location, it says you've arrived and then it turns off. This one keeps going, showing you distance and direction until you stop navigating. The other thing I like is the screen is bigger than on the bike GPS. I've got a couple of geocaches I'm trying to find that seem to be very well hidden, getting a better, higher accuracy signal with this unit helps you out because this one has an external antenna and I think that makes all the difference. I used this on a geocache oh, about six weeks ago with the phone and the bike GPS. I could only get within a maybe a 50, 50 foot circle and you're looking for a camouflaged geocache this one got me right to the, the tree stump where the geocache was hidden. And once I got to that area, just looking around for 30 seconds, and I found it. So sometimes this thing can help where a smartphone just doesn't have quite the receiver sensitivity on the GPS. And my bike GPS is okay, but it's such a small screen it really doesn't help you find the exact tree that you need to be looking in or the exact spot. Now I've got this working again. I'll put these uh, eight screws back in. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the inside of that. I remember at the time they were talking about how they just barely were able to fit everything in this unit. And you know, they weren't kidding. I mean, it is packed. Over here, you've got your battery pack with the uh, six AA cells in here, the whole processor board, and then the front here, that's your color liquid crystal display, and then this is probably your power supply, because this thing, I think, can run it off of anything up to, like, 24-volt system. It'll run off a of 12, 24-volt, and then it's got the six batteries you can run off of six NICADs which is about seven seven or eight volts or you could run off of six alkaline cells so they must have a a little 
DC to DC converter here, they probably step everything down to like 5 volts here. But there's your power for the main board, the power for the liquid crystal. Here's your sound piezo beeper. Yeah, must be some RF stuff. Where, yeah, here's your uh, antenna is right here. So the antenna comes in there. Must be some receiving circuitry there. That's probably the GPS receiver. Must not have had flash memory in this, so they have a backup memory battery there. But yeah, at least I got it got it working. It was th that screw right there had backed out and fallen out, and it was just rattling around in here. You could hear it tinkling around when you you just tipped it one way or the other, and you could hear that. So that must be a ground. There was a copper pad, bare copper pad under the screw, and maybe it goes into a connection down below here, because this one also has a copper pad under it. So maybe that's like the ground plane connection. Because the last time I used this, I also noticed I would turn it on, on the screen it kept saying low battery. And I had just charged the batteries, and I, I was able to get it running long enough to find the geocache. And then when I came back, I charged up the batteries, but they were all at 1.2 volts. I have nickel metal hydride in here. They all seemed to be fully charged. And then I charged them, put them back in, tried to turn it on, and it wouldn't turn on. And I bet you that screw had worked loose. It was probably loose when I was running it and it said the battery voltage was low and that's probably a ground connection. Yeah, if you hear any rattling inside of one of these units, there's probably a screw loose. So that was the culprit right there. Yeah, they they really packed that full. I mean, this thing is two pounds, about one kilogram with batteries in it. So, I mean, this is a huge unit, you know, compared to the GPS units today. But this, this thing has a really good receiver in it, and I like that it has the external antenna. You can either use this little one, or I have a couple of the coax cables and active antennas that go off of here. And those really work good. Yeah, I gotta get the screws back in. I'll get my serial data cable plugged in. I need to upload a couple of waypoints here. And then I can go out and find some of these hard to find geocaches that are very well hidden. So having a good GPS that gets you within a small circle instead of a big circle really helps. If you're digging around in the leaves looking for some tiny little geocache, if I can dig in a small area, I can look at everything, but if I have to go in a 10 by 10 meter area, I'm not going to dig through that much leaves, but if I can get it down to a 1 or 2 or 3 foot, maybe a 1 meter diameter circle, you can look at every leaf. But anyway, if you like that, I'll put some of the other GPS and geocaching videos over on the left side. And if you have any questions about that, post up in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.